Uh, good morning to all of us who are here in class and uh, all of you who've joined online. Uh, welcome to the second semester for all of you who are doing the full program. Um, so before we begin, uh, let's just open with a word of prayer and then we will uh, get into some introductions and uh, an overview of the course. Um, yeah, I'll just open us in prayer. Father, we uh, just thank you, Lord, um, as we begin this semester, uh, Lord, that you have brought us through this past year. You have uh, brought us through the last semester. And uh, Lord, we begin this semester just putting our trust in you, that you will carry us through, that you will give us uh, the grace, the strength, the wisdom, the understanding that we need uh, for every course that we're going to be in, for everything else that we have uh, apart from our classes, Lord, everything else that we um, are responsible for, Lord, that you will uh, enable us, Lord, to be faithful in every aspect of our lives. Uh, we pray your blessings over our time together. We ask, Lord, that you uh, would lead our time, that you would bless it and help it, Lord, to be fruitful, um, that we would um, absorb all the things that you want to teach us, that we would um, retain it and that it would bear fruit in our lives, Lord. We pray for every student gathered here, your blessings upon each student, um, each one of us, Lord, uh, where we are personally with you, we pray that uh, through these classes we will grow in our knowledge, in our understanding, and in our intimacy with you, Lord, uh, that uh, these classes would not only be about um, growing in knowledge, but it will be about growing in our relationship with you. Uh, we thank you for all your blessings towards us. We welcome you, Lord, to lead uh, us through the semester, lead us through these classes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, so before we begin, um, I'll just introduce myself because um, I didn't have you all the previous semester. So uh, my name is Smitha and I uh, serve part-time with All People's Church. So I um, teach at the Bible College and this semester I'll be teaching two classes for uh, your for the first years. Uh, we'll be doing interpreting scripture together, which is what we're doing for this hour and the next hour. And uh, in the third hour, we'll be doing the New Testament survey. Uh, so I am teaching uh, maybe for my fourth semester here or third semester here. Uh, I'm and kind of new to all of the online stuff as well. Uh, so bear with me as I figure all of that out. Um, I'm married to Manohar, who is on staff with All People's Church. And we have a two-year-old daughter uh, and another child on the way. Uh, so uh, baby's due end of this semester. So yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I would also love to hear all your names. Um, I've posted on the classroom and asked you all to introduce yourselves. But since we have a smaller group um, joining today, uh, maybe all of us who are here can just share our name, uh, where we are from, um, what we are doing, if we are full-time students, or if we are doing something apart from uh, being at Bible College. And um, also maybe one thing you did during the break, something that you did during this December break, that you were home or wherever you were, uh, something that you did during your time off. Uh, so we can start um, maybe... Um, with the, should we start with the online students and then go to the in-person students? If anyone online wants to begin.
if you are not able to unmute um, and speak, uh, please feel uh, just do that in Google Classroom. Uh, but for all of you who are able to, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Good morning, Pastor. I am Parumita Puddar, and I am from West Bengal. I'm a part-time uh, student because uh, I am also studying for post-graduation. OK, thank you. And something that you did during your break between semesters? Uh, Ma'am, I was studying for my uh, um, PG. OK, so working hard even on your break. Well, good morning. Good morning. I'm Machila Miriam from Uganda. Welcome, yeah, Medium. So uh, Medium, would you like to share what you're doing? Are you a full time student or um, are you also doing something on the side? I'm a, a full-time student. OK, thank you. Um, and anything you did during this break between semesters? Oh, nothing, but I had a good time with God. I had full time with him. Talk, um, I was talking in more of the semester that I'm doing right now, and I believe that it will go well. Yeah, amen. Thank you. Welcome to class. Thank Good you. Morning, Pastor. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. My name is Pankaj Hazong from Assam. Uh, uh, before doing this class, I was ministering, and again after this class, also I was still in ministry or two, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So uh, I'm sure December was a busy month then. Sure, so, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It was. Okay. Thank you, Pankaj. Welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, this is uh, Warren, Warren Serrao. So I, uh, I'm in Paris, France at the moment. Uh, and it's uh, 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I work full time. So I'm uh, uh, this is my yeah, like second semester. I'm doing the whole course. Uh, I mean, it's it's not very easy for me to uh, attend all le the lessons because I'm constantly working. But I I made an effort. I said, let me see if I can wake up in the morning and, and do this. And yeah, the Lord helped me to do this. So I'm looking forward to the to the, to the lesson. And uh, yeah, I serve as a I'm a musician. Uh, I, I used to be a professional musician, so I serve as a worship leader in my church here in Paris. Thank you. Welcome, Warren. Thank you for the um, sacrifice you're making of sleep to be here. Uh, I'm sure it'll be uh, you will be blessed through the sacrifice you're making. Amen. Praise the Lord, sister. I'm uh, Mrs. Esther. I'm from Hyderabad, and uh, I'm a full-time. Uh, professional uh, recruiter for Dunamis Global. And uh, during the break, I had a blessed time with family, enjoyed the festivities of Christmas, New Year, and uh, being a blessing to many by uh, going to you know outreach and helping the people who are in need, especially during the cold winters. So this is what I can say is my uh, uh, what I did during the break. So looking forward for a blessed semester. And uh, all glory to God. Thank you. Welcome, Esther. Thank you. Hi, Pastor. Good morning. Uh, Good. Sorry, Sanjay, if you want to go first. No, please go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll join later. 
Thank you. Uh, so I'm Angeline, and uh, like I'd mentioned on the course uh, page, I'm a working professional, but I've taken up uh, the entire course as well. Um, I'm looking forward to grow more in the Lord. I'm uh, also a pastor's wife, so I want to. Um, I wanted to complete my uh, theology as well, so I can. It can be more helpful for me to minister to the people around me. I also have a uh, nine-month-old daughter, so this uh, semester break was uh, just a family time and uh, more of uh, time with my daughter. Thank you. Okay. Welcome, Angeline. Yeah, I, I did read your introduction. Thank you so much for being here, and um, I'm sure it will be a time of blessing for all of us. Thank you, you Pastor. Good morning, Pastor, and uh, good morning to all my fellow students. So my name is Sanjay. I'm, uh, besides the course which I'm doing here, I'm also a freelance guitar instructor. And uh, this December was pretty quiet, just a little more reading, biblical-related uh, uh, books and a bit of writing. That's it. Nothing much. Thank you. OK. That's a great way to spend uh, the end of the year God bless you. Thank you, Sanjay. Good morning, sister. I'm Lucy from Bangalore. I'm a homemaker and I'm doing my uh, full term course. And uh, during the month of December, it helped me a lot to grow in my spiritual life. Thanks, Welcome. sister. Welcome. Thank you, Lucy. That's great. Thank you. Uh, good morning, sister. I am Shekhar Ambutwar from Raigad, Maharashtra. I am pastoring the church. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Shekhar. You're, I think you said you're pastoring a church, right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Uh, hello, yeah. my name is Tim. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Jennifer. Yeah, yeah. yeah my name is Jennifer. So uh, I'm from Bangalore and uh, I'm working uh, in one one BPO company. And I'm doing this as part time in online. I'm doing this class. Uh, also, like this uh, December break, I, I have attended this uh, youth camp, uh, mission camp from APC. Yeah. Uh, I also like I was a part of the prayer group, uh, intercessory prayer group in my church. And there was la like a lot of back to back uh, conferences, prayer conferences going on in a church. So uh, it was full busy, like spiritually it was so busy for me this month. Yeah, December tends to be that way. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, um, so my name is Sam. I uh, lead the youth ministry here at APC Bangalore. Um, and also I do marketing at uh, APC as well. Uh, I think during the SEM break, yeah, it was very busy uh, with a lot of uh, potlucks, events. Uh, so now I'm trying to cut off all the food intake mm -hmm. <laughs> that I had in December. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to this semester as well. Thank you, Sam. Welcome. Okay. Um, are there any others before we move to students who are present in class here? OK, if you were not able to introduce yourself uh, here, please do go into Google Classroom, and you can post an introduction there. Um, it just helps for us to uh, have an idea of where each of our students are coming from and um, being able to also relate our classes to what you are doing in your everyday life um, is helpful. So we'll go to uh, students here, if you would like to uh, share your name whether you're a full-time student, um, where you're from, and what you did on your break. I think the mic is up here, so you're good. Oh, you're welcome to come up here.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Savita. I'm from Odisha. Oh. You're a full time student. You're a full time. You're studying full time, right? Yeah. Anything you did during December that you want to share? Visited home and family. I went for uh, Christmas holiday. Everything will, uh, everything was happened very well, and I came back. I'm happy. Thank you. Can you repeat your name uh, again? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Your name? Name? Yeah. Sabita. Sabita. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Nelson Bage from Odisha, and I'm studying full time here. The month of December was quite busy for me, and I was uh, able to celebrate my Christmas very well. So, thank you. Good to have you here, Nelson. Good morning, all of you. It's Saga, a full time student here. I'm from Agra. And the month of summer, it is like so much busy for me. I'm from north, and it was like roaming village to village to make the Christmas programs more special to the local churches. It was like that for me all the summer. Thank you, Sagar, right? Good morning, I'm Akhil. So I parallelly run a cloud kitchen and a catering unit. So all of December was pretty much busy catering to quite a few people. Thank you. Welcome, Akil. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, I'm Blessy from Andhra. So I'm a full uh, full time student. Yeah, last uh, last month uh, it was like a very busy schedule for me. Uh, we used to roam all the villages, like, uh, but uh, we have a lot of uh, local churches. Mm. Uh, so we distributed clothes and, in like, uh, all the gifts and for them, it's uh, we celebrated a uh, very nice our Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Blessy. Okay, so we're going to be spending the next three hours together, and I didn't want to be talking for that whole time, so I thought we'll just spend some time at least getting to know each other before we uh, get into our course information. Um, let me just share with you uh, a few things about what we can expect in this course. Um, and then um, we'll get into the content. OK, let me know what you're seeing can you you can see the presentation as is right you can see the um, slide on presentation view uh, for those online especially OK, thank you. OK, so uh, we are uh, going into uh, this topic on interpreting scripture. And I'll just go over the course overview, which is a little paragraph just introducing what uh, we're going to be looking at during this course. Um, so we are going to be looking at God's word in the life of a believer. That's what we're going to start with. Uh, I think each of you should have a copy of uh, God's word, the miracle seed. Uh, so this is an APC publication for all of you online. I've posted a, a link on Google Classroom so you can download the book. Um, um, so that's one way you can access it, or if you can get a printed copy, um, especially for those within India, you can request a printed copy and we can send that out to you. Um, so 
this is the first book that we'll be covering and then we'll go into some lecture notes uh, on how do we interpret scripture uh, so there we'll look at some of the challenges uh, in interpreting scripture what uh, are some challenges that we face uh, things like um, the culture that scripture uh, is written in, it's written to a completely different culture, it's written in a different time period. Um, and so uh, historically, uh, in a religious, from a religious perspective, it comes to a Jewish people, right? So we are reading um, a, a um, word that is written to people from a Jewish background. And so how do we understand their background? How do we understand their history, their culture, uh, and interpret scripture in the light of all of those things playing a role uh, in what is written in the word of God? Um, and then uh, we will also look at uh, some other difficult passages uh, that are there in scripture. So why we think this course is important is because all of us are here to study for our own personal growth, but we also then uh, will have opportunities to teach others, right? To teach the word to others. And so we want to uh, be correctly interpreting scripture because when we are understanding it for ourselves or teaching other people, we want to make sure that what we are teaching is accurate, uh, right? Because if we misunderstand scripture, then we misapply scripture and then um, people start to live in accordance with what we've taught. And so if we have taught something that is wrong, then people start to follow something that is wrong. Uh, and so we want to be very careful to, uh, to correctly understand what we are studying in scripture and then correctly interpret it uh, to others so that when they are taking it and applying it to their lives, they are taking the truth of scripture and applying the truth of scripture to their lives. Um, so uh, there are two verses here in this course overview. Timothy 4.16 says, Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Uh, continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Uh, so this is the Apostle Paul uh, writing to Timothy, right? Timothy is um, someone who was mentored by Paul, and Paul is reminding him uh, to watch his own life and to watch the teaching uh, that he is passing on, uh, because as he's doing this, he's making sure that he's both uh, protecting his own salvation and the salvation of the others to whom he's ministering. Uh, so. That is the weight of interpreting scripture, right? That uh, in these words uh, is salvation. We are communicating the truth of salvation to people. And so we want to be careful with what we are saying, what we are teaching. Um, and 2 Timothy 2.15, uh, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, and so that um, aspect of rightly dividing, rightly uh, dissecting the word uh, and uh, from that dissection, getting uh, truth out of the word of God. We want to do that right. Uh, so these are some um, outcomes that I have put down that at the end of this semester, uh, these are the goals we are working towards, right? That uh, each of us individually, students, are able to learn to meditate on God's, God's word. So that's mostly what we will look at in this book, uh, is how do you meditate on God's word? Uh, and how do you take the truth of God's word and apply it to your own life, to see it bear fruit in your own life? Uh, so we want each student to know how to meditate on God's word, how to receive that truth, uh, from that time of meditation, how to apply it to their lives. Um, we uh, The second goal is that students know what are the challenges when you're looking at a scripture passage, what are the challenges you're facing in that passage, what are the questions you should be asking, uh, and then how do you uh, correctly interpret, uh, how do you answer those questions correctly. Uh, and then the third thing is that you're able to use this process, which we look at called observation, interpretation, and application. So you 
observe a passage. You look at what is the passage saying. Uh, then you interpret it to understand what is it, what is the message it's trying to communicate, and then to look at the application. So uh, how do I take this message and apply it to my life? And how do I encourage others to apply it to their lives? So that is the method of interpretation we're going to be looking at. Um, that'll be a little later after we finish this first book. Um, so we'll have two assessments during the semester, and we'll. Um, this will be mostly uh, just a multiple choice exam. Um, so February 19th, that will be a midterm, and then April 8th, we'll do our final exam. I've also put down a rough schedule on Google Classroom for what we'll be covering each week. Um, just so that we make sure we cover all the content we need to cover. Um, and if we don't follow it exactly, it's OK. But just for us to have a guideline of what to expect during the semester. Um, yes, we, I might give you all some other assignments apart from these, but those will be unmarked assignments, like um, something to practice meditating on the Word of God uh, and kind of sharing what you've learned through your time of meditation. We might do some things like that, but those will not be uh, marked for your final um, score. Okay, So um, you all have all been here one semester, so you know the uh, other aspects of what you requ what is required to pass. I think you need a minimum of 35%, and all that information is on Google Classroom. OK, so. Um, this is one verse that we look at in this book, but I just put it down here, Second Timothy 3.16. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Uh, so scripture is so foundational to our lives as believers. Uh, so for us personally, teaching us how to walk, teaching us uh, the way in which we should walk. And then uh, once we are able to walk in line with scripture, to be able to also help others walk in line with scripture. Uh, so this is just a verse to remind us of uh, how foundational scripture is to the life of a believer. Um, so for today, I didn't create a PowerPoint for what all we'll be covering. Uh, we'll just go into God's Word, the Miracle Seed, uh, and we'll start to look at some of that content um, before we take a break. Right? So I hope everyone has the book. Yes, yeah. Any questions on uh, anything that I shared so far? No? OK. So um, so why we are actually looking at God's word, like spending a whole semester looking at God's word, and then spending this initial part of looking at what does uh, God's word have to do with an individual believer's life, uh, is because God works powerfully through his word. Uh, what are some examples you all can think of of how God has used his word to do something? Any examples from scripture? Why do we say that God's word is powerful? Anyone online or... Uh, in person, feel free to share. And because uh, in, in in the beginning, there was the word, and the word was with God, and God created the world and everything that existed through the word. Yes, thank you, Warren. So, right at Genesis, right the beginning uh, of all creation, we see the importance that the word played. Right. It was through the word of God that creation came into being. There was nothing that existed, and God spoke, and things came to life. Things that were not there uh, began to uh, be formed, right? 
so uh, life and just material things came to being just from God's word. And so we see just at the start of scripture how powerful God's word is. Um, so we want to look at how do we uh, first recognize the power of God's word? Okay, and then how do we apply or uh, receive that power in our own lives? Right, so we are always, um, we always hear at least a lot uh, in some of our churches about miracles, about healing, about all of these uh, very physical ways in which God is moving. Uh, but God also moves in quiet ways. He moves through the reading of his word, through uh, the memorization of his word, through the speaking of his word. And those things sometimes are forgotten because we want to see the big supernatural things. Um, and so when we are looking at this um, subject, we want to say we need to go back to that simple aspect of reading God's word, receiving God's word for ourselves, investing time uh, personally in um, studying God's word because there are miracles that happen through God's word just as we see in creation. And so if we want to see God bringing transformation into our lives, uh, if we want to see things manifested in our lives, then we need to be going back to God's word. We need to know what his word says and then we need to receive that for ourselves. We need to be declaring that over our lives. We need to be believing that for ourselves, believing that God is a God who says things and things happen. Right. And so when we uh, look at his word, we want to um, we want to claim that for ourselves. So if God has said uh, that healing is um, that he is our healer, then we declare that over our lives. We declare that over the lives of our loved ones. We declare that over people we are ministering to. Um, if God has said that he will prosper us and he will not harm us, then we speak that over uh, difficult situations that we're in. If we are facing challenges in our careers, if we are facing challenges in our, um, whether it's ministry or our finances or our families, to believe that God has good plans for us. Like God wants to prosper us. God has every day of our lives written down, and He knows uh, what He wants to do for our future. He's not just a blind person leading us blindly, right? That we can just step into anything, anything in the future. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. We don't have to live life that way. So knowing those promises, declaring those promises, believing it for ourselves, and believing that when we take God's word uh, and receive it for ourselves, that it will bear fruit in our lives. OK, so um, that is that is the main goal of this book. Uh, and we look at how do we receive it for ourselves? How do we uh, really meditate on God's word and see it bear fruit uh, in our lives? Um, so chapter one, um, we look at God's word, which is the foundation for our faith. Uh, so here we are just encouraging people that if you want to grow in your faith, you should be investing time in studying the Bible. Um, that is something that we have to develop as a discipline, right? That we are going back to the word, we are spending time studying the word uh, for ourselves personally, not only when we have to minister, not only when we have to teach. And it's very easy to start to do that, right? Because uh, when I'm ministering, I feel like, okay, I'm learning so much when I'm studying the word. So, I'm actually receiving a lot. Do I need to have my own personal time? Do I need to be studying uh, the Bible for myself apart from the ministry that I'm doing or the teaching that I'm doing? Um, but that personal time is what we are investing in relationship with God. So uh, we want to encourage that people are spending time studying the word of God. And all of us are probably doing that. All of us probably know it. But just to remind us of the importance of doing it and why we do it as well. So uh, how much we will grow in intimacy with God, how much we will grow in maturity in our faith is dependent on how much time we are willing to invest in the word of God. 
uh, because the word of God reveals so much about who God is. And it is through that revelation of who God is that we can grow in intimacy with him. Right? It's That's how we grow in relationship with someone. We know them and then we grow in relationship with them. Um, so uh, apart from growing in relationship, it's also that we want to grow in our confidence in who God is and in his word. So that no matter what challenges we're facing in our lives, uh, we can stand strong on the word of God. Right? It doesn't matter uh, what is coming our way, even if it looks completely contrary to what God has promised us, we don't shake, we don't fall, we don't lose our faith uh, because of those challenges. We hold on to the word of God because we know that behind the word of God is God himself. And God is someone who can be trusted. Uh, we look at a few passages in scripture um, that talk about that. Uh, so let's just begin uh, by reading a few scripture passages. Uh, Luke 24, 27. Um, it says, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So the whole of scripture points to Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment of the word of God, right? He's the manifest word of God. And so uh, when Jesus was teaching about himself, uh, when he wanted others to understand him, uh, who he was and what his purpose was in coming to earth, he pointed back to the scriptures. Uh, we'll read a few other passages and I'm going to ask um, so, like one of you all to read. I'll just give you the passage and you can uh, find it in your Bible and read. So John 1, 1 to 4, if someone can read that for us. Can I read, sister? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Uh, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Thank you. And uh, if you can also read John 1, verse 14, please. Yes. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, so we see uh, Jesus, uh, as Warren also shared before, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and He was there in the beginning, right? So that Word that brought all creation uh, into existence then became part of creation, became flesh, right? Uh, so Jesus Himself, who is uh, the Word of God, uh, in flesh, um, handled the word of God in certain ways. So we look at his example. How did Jesus use the word of God and learn from his example about what us, how has he uh, given it uh, the value or the respect or the honor that is due to the word of God? And how can we take some lessons from that? Okay, um, look. Let's look at Luke twenty, uh, Luke two forty six to forty seven. If someone can read that for us. Sorry, uh, uh, Luke two forty six. Uh, now so it was uh, that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of, te of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. Uh, 
And all who heard him were astonished at, it, at his understanding and answers. Thank you. So, uh, we see here Jesus at a very young age um, had a deep understanding of scripture, uh, of scriptural truth. And he was able to engage with the teachers and scribes. Uh, he wasn't only engaging with them in terms of uh, in terms of debating, but he was also learning from them, right? So we see here that he was learning and he was asking questions. So he went uh, there with a humility that he didn't need to have, um, but he uh, received from them their knowledge, their understanding. He was learning from them, he was asking them questions, uh, and people could see that he himself had studied uh, the scriptures. So that is one thing for us to take away that Jesus. Uh, engaged in studying and learning the scriptures. Uh, if Jesus had to do that, then we most definitely should be doing it. Uh, let's look at Matthew 4, 1 to 10. And I know everyone knows this passage, but we'll still read it. Uh, Matthew 4 verses 1 to 10. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, after afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only. You shall serve. Thank you. Um, so I think we are at break time. So we'll come back and look at what we can take away from this passage. Uh, we'll just take a 10 minute break and we'll be back. Thank you.